Hi guys, it's Wainet. I'm at the machine shop, which is where I've got my pottery and glass studio over in a corner. Yeah, it gets, what, dusty, dirty. So I have to clean everything, but I've got access to 220 power and I've got quite a nice little area set up. That's my wheel. It's a Clay Boss by Creative Industries. It's a good little wheel, um, not terribly expensive. I am getting ready to throw some porcelain. Now, out there at the very edge, if you can see that white thing, that is my uh, one of my shelves for my ceramic kiln. It needed the uh, kiln wash refreshed on it, so I scraped it and then put four coats. I use hot fire kiln wash. It's lavender. You can see where it goes. It does a great job. I will put that in the ceramic kiln and prime it. It has to be fired to a low temperature. Now walking in, I'm just going to kind of, yeah, this is half of, part of the machine shop is one half. So it, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of stuff. Um, I'm over in the corner where all the red is, and I'm going to walk over there in just a minute. My husband raced go-karts competitively for 18 years, so let's see, that is one of the go-karts right there, and it is in my area, but it's on wheels and I can move it easily. Now I scavenge just about every table and I reuse things, so right here in all these boxes, this entire tabletop is covered with um, shoot, stained glass. It was, um, a guy had a stained glass business, he was a good friend, he had stage four lung cancer, and he gave me what he was not able to sell back to the companies the glass companies. Down here, that big box right there, those are larger sheets of glass. There's more glass in that milk crate. There's a whole box of glass right there. They were, these pieces were too small for him, even those huge sheets, or he just didn't get around to using them, but he couldn't sell it back. And so he very kindly gave me all of this stained glass, which is wonderful. I cannot fuse with it unless I fuse piece of glass back to itself so um, but I do glass on glass mosaics so uh, just incredibly nice people down here this is a sorter box that I grabbed from mixed media people yes those are real those are rusted washers gold pure gold over here those are um, steel pipe rings that I had cut to a certain you know, length, I guess. And I put, I'm, I need to bead blast them, get the rust off of them. Fortunately, the bead blaster's here in the machine shop. And then I can um, put, not shelf paper, but fiber paper around the inside and put a bunch of chips in the middle and melt it and get a nice piece of round, thick glass that I can then slump or use as display. There's more huge stained glass pieces right here. This is a lapidary saw that uh, wasn't working and was donated to me because, yeah, I cut stuff. So the bad man rigged it and we got it working again for nominal investment. And I'm walking by and dodging my, that's my glass kiln that you see right there. I won't show you the inside because it's firing. I have some pendants in it. It, the difference between a glass kiln and a pottery kiln, one of the main one, the heating elements are located in the lid of a glass kiln, so the heat distributes evenly down onto the glass, whereas, panning, 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 right here, this is, and you can see I'm kiln washing the base of the kiln too. This is a ceramic kiln in these dark areas. Those are the elements. The elements are in the side, so the heat comes evenly from all sides of the objects. Because generally you're working with three-dimensional items in a pottery kiln and basically not really flat, flat, but maybe not as three-dimensional as the um, 
pottery items. Now, in the black, that black cabinet, which is being blocked by this go-kart, and this is the stuff that I use to cover the, um, my supplies with. That's got like my griffin grip for centering. It's got my heat gun. It has texture tools. It has all kinds of stuff in it. And my father-in-law gave me that wonderful cabinet. This is a rolling cart, and it's got stuff for throwing. It's got bats for my wheel. Um, I hang, that's the kiln wash in a garden sprayer that I'm using right there. And plastic bags, and just slip, all that kind of good stuff. My extruder is right there. There's my clay, and there's a bag of plastic bags, which I tend to cover my projects so they dry more slowly. And down in here, I have uh, glass molds and, sorry, one of the doors is opening up. I have the glass molds and the clay molds. And some of them are homemade, some of them not. This, let me remove this cover. This is float fire glass. You cannot mix coefficients of expansion. This is a coefficient of 82. It's a relatively hard glass. It's a beautiful glass. It has a very limited range of colors, but I do like working with it. Um, I tend to do very geometric things with it. It holds its shape really, 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 really well. There is stained glass. That's what I purchased. And this is like the scrap bin where I've taken some off sheets. And then these are, for the most part, fairly full sheaths. Sheath, uh, sheets. Wow. I'm trying to zoom out a little bit. This is my light box. It also doubles as a cutting place because this is a grid underneath. This is an example of what I was talking about with the steel pipe. I clean it up. I put fiber paper put glass down here, melt it, you get a nice thick round plate of glass. This is a cabinet that I opened up and I have like foot sorters up there. I have tools, tools I use with powdered glass and little containers to mix up fritz and then generally cleaning supplies. Up here I've got stained glass straps, scraps, wow I can't talk today. This is float fire 82 scraps and that is unknown scraps but there's also a display iron wrought iron display for a bowl so that's my cabinet homemade clay cutter and this is my wedging table i have a glass card holder business card holder but yeah so i've just covered it with canvas, another homemade cutter. This has got fusing supplies, scraps that I want to recycle, and those are fusing glass, art glass scraps that I want to recycle. So, moving. I'm trying to walk around. Uncovering. I keep it covered, but I still need to clean it. This is a glass saw that I purchased. It will only cut in one direction, and that is perpendicular to the blade, but a very good glass saw. This is a grinder. This is a really nice glass saw that cuts 360. The blade is actually a, like a circular band, and it's diamond covered on all sides. So super nice. Frit and assorted hardware behind it. I, I love doing dealing with frit because it gives an impressionistic look. I use a Morton glass cutting system. Works really well. All my little tools that I need when I'm cutting glass. I'm getting ready to do a pot melt. And I use Italian clay pots like this. And I'm out of them, evidently. I tried to keep some on hand. But apparently this is, I've got something hanging off of it, but this is the only one I have. I've drilled extra holes. I put this in my clay kiln, fill it up with glass, which is what I'm getting these ready for. Put it all in here. 
elevate the kiln and let it liquefy and pour down, which is one reason why I am uh, redoing the kiln wash on my shelf. So I, I need it in really good shape. I've got some reference material. This is the most commonly used coefficient of 90 glass. This has got little treats in it. Um, like milliflory. I have circles, shaped glass, and this is where I stash my dichroic glass. It's that really sparkly kind of glass. Anything that's just kind of special or for you know, decorating the glass is pretty much in that drawer. Coefficient of 90 scraps, system 96, another uh, type of glass. Moss for my Spanish moss pendants. And then over here, all in there, this has got bottles and stuff to recycle somehow. I like to cut rings and then flatten the rings and decorate them. I've got my glazes, I have stringers and some rods right there. That's all coefficient of 90. Spare kiln shells, <laughs> a belt, yeah. And diamond coolant stuff from my lapidary saw. And then we're kind of back around to the lapidary saw with the geodes in front of them. And I'm hoping that I get a chance to cut into those today. Some of them, oops, I don't mean to shake. Some of them I want to cut with the lapidary saw and some of them I want to cut with a, a chisel and a hammer. So that's it. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you. Right here, that's all glass that was stored in a barn and never going to be used. And there's even more down there where I've cut it into it. So I swiped all of it and brought it up here. Oh, and down in here, that's two boxes of glass, coefficient of 90. So that is my my glass studio. My, I have a Raku kiln that's out in the barn. I pull it out into a sort of a sandy area so that it's not such a fire hazard because it does flame up when I drop the hot item. And there I am. That's it. It's just a little corner, but people have been so kind and so generous. Um, that cart, that super nice cart over there was just around the shop and they said I could use it, I could have it. So, so I don't mind if my husband's go-karts uh, are stored in the middle of it. It works for me. I have a nice little area. Yep, I have to come in here and clean it up periodically, but it never gets real bad. It just gets a little dusty and I love it. So I'm about to go play with um, some porcelain and see how that goes. I've never worked with this particular clay before, so I will let you know. And when those pendants come out, I will show you those. That was using some of the royal glass that I showed you in a haul video back in December, I think. So, all right, guys. Bye.